Okay. Um, so as I get into this, I wanted to just let's level set on what Covanta is for everybody on the phone. Um, Covanta is historically a an asset based waste to energy business. And what waste to energy does is it takes in municipal solid waste uh, or profile waste for the purpose of incinerating it and recovering energy. So we view that and the EPA views that as a step above landfill. At least there's energy recovery associated with waste diversion. That's our core business. We've been around for many years doing that as a core business. Um, however, we're now hearing the kinds of questions that were asked from people like Gabe. Uh, and over the last 10 years or so, Covanta has made a concerted effort to become not just a waste to energy business, but a one-stop shop for all waste management, whether we're talking about uh, plant trash or material for recycling like plastics, organics management like composting and anaer anaerobic digestion, deep packaging and recycling on finished obsolete products. Uh, Covanta has taken steps to roll all of those capabilities under its belt. Uh, and so I'll go through the presentation today and uh, and show you a little bit about how we've gotten to where we are today and how we can solve some of the issues that uh, sure some of the folks on the phone are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. So as a general uh, as a general point, Covanta's base level service, waste to energy, is a zero waste to landfill solution. So for a lot of our customers that want to get out of landfills and move waste up the hierarchy, our standard waste to energy service is the Quote, easy button. It gets you out of landfill, moves material into a zero waste to landfill status, and gets you to that status before the deadlines hit, your self-imposed deadlines or any, any other deadlines that you're trying to work against. Um, we use a, uh, a full portfolio of our offerings in a single service here to make sure that we're disposing landfill, uh, disposing of previously landfill bound materials in a, uh, in a, in a smart and efficient manner. And so the idea here is uh, for anybody that's still lagging behind in sustainability goals, right? If you don't have, uh, if you're not on a good path to get out of landfill by 2025 or 2030, uh, I'd encourage you to take a look at Covanta. We have facilities all over the country. I'll show you where those are momentarily to at least get you a landfill as a starting point. And then everything else that I'm going to be talking about today uh, can show you how we can move up the hierarchy from there, do more source segregation at the site, send recyclables for recycling, organics for composting, uh, and then whatever's left for you know waste energy or alternative fuels. And so uh, what I wanted to show you here is our sustainable solutions overview. So we are now not just a waste to energy business, but we offer all of these treatment options that you can see up on the street on the screen here. Um, we offer secure disposal options for organizations as large as the DEA, uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration, being able to uh, incinerate and destroy uh, confiscated drugs from airports, ships, et cetera, uh, pharmacies. And then we've also got these, these new re reuse and recycling solutions. So whether you are looking for a better recycler for your plastics or a better recycler for your uh, production scrap, um, Covanta has uh, options for you to, to solve those needs. Uh, we also offer field services, um, you know, whether it's spill cleanup, emergency service work, that kind of thing. Uh, we also offer advisory and consulting solutions. So we have a few customers today that we work with uh, on a zero waste to landfill plan by the, a certain goal and also on a uh, an up the hierarchy plan, so to speak, to, to move more of the materials into recycling to design materials to be more recyclable. So acting as an advisor, not just on the waste, but also more upstream on the design of the product and design of the packaging altogether. Uh, we offer wastewater treatment solutions as part of our uh, material processing facilities around the country, and also um, as part of our third-party subcontracting network. We also offer hazardous waste disposal options through the same method, that third-party subcontracted network. I'll get into what that means in just a bit. Um, Covanta also has a, a wide 
range of transportation and logistics services. So we have our own fleet of trucks in various regions around the country, but we also work directly with haulers, whether you need drop trailers, whether you need tanker loads, et cetera. So we can solve for any transportation method that your waste requires. Um, and this is just a little bit about you know, moving into what Covanta is becoming today, uh, more of an environmental solutions company. Um, so taking a leap from our core business, which is waste energy, into what we're becoming, I wanted to, to use this slide to illustrate some of our key metrics. So today there are 18 MPFs that are material processing facilities that Covanta has around the country. Those MPFs uh, have a couple of different capabilities. The, the primary capability is to produce blends of material in a pit that can be fed to our waste energy facilities. We also offer uh, certain types of services like product depackaging. Uh, we offer wastewater treatment at some of those facilities. We offer uh, we offer product disassembly in some cases. And so the idea here is those MPFs are like mini material processing facilities for us that open up the capability to do more with the waste. So for instance, uh, if we were receiving full truckloads of expired product that is packed in, in its consumer packaging in in plastic bottles that are packed in cardboard cases that are stacked on pallets, right? Our material processing facilities and our third-party network is capable of taking products like that, putting it through a depackaging system. So we are draining the liquid or semi-liquid content out of the packaging. And then we end up with three separate streams, something like uh, you know cardboard bales from the original cases that were broken down, plastic bales of the empty bottles, and then also decanted liquid or beneficial product for reuse. Uh, we've done that with things like soaps, lotions, et cetera. So, so it goes to show that we're not just a waste energy business. As part of our wastewater treatment options, we have recycled over 1.7 million tons of wastewater. Uh, we've also acquired a company that will bolster our ability to uh, manage waste uh, wastewater around the around the globe. We uh, we have a reverse distribution center um, for healthcare and the DEA, where we take in confiscated drugs, we take in expired pills and and other uh, narcotics from pharmacies and hospitals and incinerate those. Uh, we also, um, we have uh, as part of the wastewater that we manage um, different facilities around the country, whether you're in Milwaukee, we're in uh, Asheboro or Augusta, uh, there are many areas where we can serve that need. Uh, a little bit of context on Covanta as a whole. So Covanta is a two plus billion dollar business with over 2,500 employees. Um, about two years ago, Covanta was still a publicly traded company. We were acquired in 2021 by EQT, which is a private equity firm, um, who is now really positioning the business for significant growth. And so as I continue in my slides, you'll see that EQT has really put their money where their mouth is uh, around trying to turn Covanta into a one-stop shop, a full sustainable material management company. And so we've been very active in the M&A space, and I'll touch on some of those acquisitions here on this slide. Um, 2014, this is really a timeline of, of where the environmental solutions business got started and has evolved. So up until that point, we were primarily a waste to energy business, not doing a whole lot of other treatment for waste. But we have acquired regional waste management facilities, uh, regional material processing facilities, and rolled them up into our business over the last 10 years. And so we have uh, facilities all around the country now, which I'll show you on a, on a map in a, in a future slide. But I really wanted to focus on the 2021 and 2022 portion of this timeline. Covanta was acquired by EQT in 2021. And since that time, uh, Covanta has acquired a few different companies. Uh, Miller Environmental Transfer out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which now acts as our, our West Co one of our West Coast material processing facilities. Uh, we acquired Biologic, the med waste uh, handler out in California. We acquired SGS, Frontier Fibers, and Buffalo Fuel Corp in um, at the end of 2022. And those businesses really bolster our ability to create alternative fuels that feed cement kilns. And so as an example, 
Um, cement kilns are one of the biggest pr- polluters on the planet. They uh, historically have had to use fossil fuels to power their facilities. Using waste to power their facilities is a sustainable material upgrade and also keeps that material out of landfill, puts it toward a, a nice beneficial reuse. So a lot of our, our growth is structured around these acquisitions and then trying to copy and paste the technology from one site and move it into our other sites around the country. Um, this is just a a snapshot of those different treatment options that we offer. Again, think of us as a baseline as your zero waste to landfill partner, because our very base service keeps material out of the landfill. But we also offer all of these other services that you see on the screen. What you see here is a map of Covanta's facilities around the country. So uh, up in the top right corner, you see a zoomed in version of the Great Northeast. Uh, our facilities are very prevalent in the Northeast. They're dotted all over the place in these very population dense areas. And then as you move west across the country, you can see some of our facilities down in the Southeast, uh, in the Midwest, and then sort of a gap uh, as you get into Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, uh, and then there's a few more facilities on the West Coast. The reason for the placement of our facilities is because we are trying to encircle the greatest number of uh, manufacturing locations where waste is generated. And so we have coverage in a lot of the areas today where, where our customers are generating waste, but you can see we're trying to acquire companies to fill in the gaps so we can, um, so we can have better coverage, less transport distance between facilities, et cetera. Uh, those blue dots represent our waste energy facilities, the core business. Those light green dots represent the MPFs that you can see that feed those facilities and also offer other services. But what's not pictured here, and I think is, is critically important, is over 900 different subcontracted processing and disposal facilities. So of those uh, 900 facilities, there is a pretty even breakout of plastic recyclers, composters, anaerobic digestion companies, um, processors that have and offer depackaging services, has waste disposal facilities, has waste incineration facilities. Um, and then we also partner with other waste to energy facilities in areas where we don't have one. So as an example, we have a customer out in Washington state. There is no waste to energy facility very close to that uh, location. And so when we need to send profiled waste into a facility out there, we will partner with a third party waste to energy business. So the the message here is that Covanta is not trying to to feed its own facilities. We are truly agnostic to where the material goes. We're trying to be that one-stop shop, trusted advisor, and if we can internalize the material in a Covanta facility, we will do that. But if it makes more sense for us to use a subcontracted location, either because they have capacity, they are closer, any one of a number of reasons, we will do that as well. We also offer uh, what we call our Sustainable Site Solutions, or S3 program. Um, anybody who, who has uh, been in the waste business for a while or operates a facility uh, would know the term TWM, or Total Waste Management. S3 is our version of Total Waste Management, where we can come in and truly take over every aspect of the waste management, all transportation, all disposal, all billing, all reporting, all waste streams. Um, and this is this is uh, an example of one of those company one of those programs that we have active today is um, a continental tire plant in uh, South Carolina where we physically have Covanta staff on site. We physically have our own equipment, our own labor, and we manage every stream coming out of that facility. Some of it goes for waste to energy, some of it goes for recycling, some of it goes to landfill. Uh, but the customer is calling the shots on where they want different waste streams to go. And so um, that's an example of a program where we can come in and totally take over the management of how your waste gets managed uh, by, by starting at the site, segregating waste based on where it's generated and building loads that go in various directions, some for plastic recycling, some for cardboard recycling, some for metal recycling, if, if relevant. Um, but this is a program that is uh, available to you should your facility feel the need uh, that that you need something like that. A lot of times the pain point we hear around waste is that uh, our, our customers are dealing with too many 
waste vendors. They might, you know, an individual facility might have a cardboard guy and a metals guy and a plastics guy, et cetera. Uh, so Covance is trying to, to erase that pain point by becoming that one-stop shop, the trusted advisor, and then we can play air traffic control on where that waste goes, depending on what our network allows. Uh, so just wanted to share that as well. Next, I wanted to show just a couple of case studies on how we manage things like recycling of, of finished products, industrial goods, whatever you might call it. So we have a customer that uh, ships us filled IV bags uh, in those cases that you see in the top left. They're packed in you know standard consumer packaging in cases on pallets. We're talking truckload quantities. Uh, the customer wanted to keep this material out of landfill and asked what Covanta could do to help support that. They were not open to a waste energy solution on this, so they were truly looking for recycling. So we put this material through a depackaging line that effectively uh, punctures those bags, drains the liquid out of them. The liquid can go for wastewater treatment. The bags can be bailed up and go for recycling to one of our vendors around the customer's location. And then those uh, the pellets that come out of the recycling process uh, get sold back into the market to make new products. So that's a, a kind of circular approach. Another example is um, household cleaning products. Uh, you can't uh, see the name or the brand of the of the uh, product in question, but based on the the packaging on the left hand side, you may be able to tell the type of product I'm talking about. Uh, another one where there were truckload quantities, whether the product was expired, off spec, uh, misfilled, could be a number of reasons why this product needed to be destroyed or disposed. And again, we provide a few agnostic options to the customer. We can just uh, send it to a waste energy facility and destroy it as is. No need to open up these, these cases or bottles. Or we could run it through a depackaging line and recycle the packaging and dispose of the content. Uh, or we could take that material to a depackaging line and recycle everything, including uh, using the, the liquid kit, the liquid product inside. So in this case, the, the customer chose the most time consuming, the most expensive, but also the most sustainable option where each material could see a new life. And then hey, lastly, Brett? yes. Hey, Brett, let me just do this. I know that Julie Lee with Beckman had a question and it, it ties in with this. I want to keep this a little bit more interactive. Julie, I'm going to open it up. If you want to ask your question about liquid injection waste management, we're going to try and cover more use cases that leverage Covanta's expertise, but I want to keep this real and illustrate that even if one of Brett's planned case studies doesn't address your issues, he's got the expertise and contacts to deal with this. Julie, do you want to go a little more about what Beckman's concerns are? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Speak a little louder. You. Okay. Yeah, I was asking about the, the waste management. Just one of the options was the liquid uh, injection. So yeah. just, I'm going to just know a little bit more details on that. Yeah, so li uh, bulk liquids or liquid products are able to, to be able to feed into our waste to energy facilities through a process called LDI. It's called liquid direct injection. So rather than putting the liquids in the same place where the refuse or waste goes, the main hoppers, you directly inject the liquid into a different opening in the system that puts that liquid directly into the flame. It's effectively evaporated. Uh, so when you see liquid direct injection, that's what that refers to. It's uh, disposal of the liquids at our waste energy plants. Okay, so if I dispose of like a uh, non-hazardous liquid type, just uh, you know, and send it over to your facility, and then just uh, that is used as kind of just a, like alternative fuel, in that case, so there's, okay. yeah, there's there's two two methods where we could solve your your liquids. One of them is through LDI, liquid direct injection, at a waste to energy plant. That's if if that makes sense ge geographically, right? A, a waste energy okay. plant may be a little far far away from your facility, but if we can take it in directly, we would inject it directly. The other option is taking that liquid to one of our MPFs where we create the blends. And so what happens is the liquids go into a pit where we solidify the liquids with things like sawdust and other waste to kind of soak up the liquid, that okay. creates a blend that we then feed to our waste energy facilities. So in both cases, whether um, you want to directly inject or create a blend that goes for waste energy, we can do that on any non-HAS liquids. Okay, great. Thank you. Good to know. Thank you. Yep. Great. And then, um, Brett, you can follow up with Julie. I want to keep a little bit of this interactive. Sure. Um, 
maybe um, if you don't mind, Brett, as we're going on and there's so many exciting things, I'm going to ask, this is uh, related, Mary Ann's with Vancouver. Uh, health out there in uh, British Columbia has got questions about IVs. Mary Ann, do you want to ask your question? Sure, thank you. Um, I just uh, find it really interesting, your IV bag recycling example, and I'm wondering if that is specific to the region where that took place. Uh, and I ask because, you know, a year or two ago, we tried to find a PVC recycling vendor that would take our IV bags, but we were mm -hmm. not able to do that. Yeah, so when you say, well, first I'll say that that example happened at our Milwaukee MPF. Uh, so I can't speak to where you're you know, whether we have that exact same option available out in the Pacific Northwest or up in British Columbia, but I'm sure that we can uh, discuss offline if you'd like to. As far as your, your point about not finding a recycler willing to take, this is an important clarification for everybody on the phone when it comes to recycling. When it comes to recycling, a lot of these streams are, are the recyclability is determined based on the economics. So if you're asking, is an IV bag, a PVC IV bag, is it technically recyclable? The answer is 100% yes. But the question that a lot of recyclers answer, which is not what you're asking, is does it make sense for them to recycle it? Meaning, is it is it uh, economically feasible for them to do it? Is the juice worth the squeeze? That's what they're, what they're answering when they say that they won't take it from you. And the... Uh, the, the recycling market um, ebbs and flows, much like the oil market, where pricing goes up, goes down. As an example, right now, cardboard pricing is in the toilet. So uh, in the past, you may have gotten large rebates for truckloads full of car cardboard bales. That uh, has changed significantly, where uh, now it's, it's sort of a cost-neutral item. Certain plastics like HDPE and PET uh, in years past had significantly high values. Those values have changed over the years. Um, products like PVC are more of a, a, a low-end plastic considered a you know a three through seven that don't have a lot of intrinsic value as is, right? So while somebody may not want to take it, they can certainly recycle it. It would just come at a cost. And so in a case uh, like the one you mentioned, Covanta would be happy to look at that, uh, look at the opportunity, ask you some questions, ask for photos, perhaps a sample, and then we, we can try to find uh, a local solution for you that can recycle that material at a cost. Um, but uh, I don't want to, I don't want you to walk away thinking that that product is not recyclable. It 100% is. It's just a question of economics. Thank you. Great. Hey, Brett, why don't you finish up your formal presentation? There's still a number sure. of questions. want to keep this the session just to an hour. Love yep. having this inter inter interaction. And then we'll try and get through some additional questions. But I want everyone to get the full con the full extent yep. of your presentation. And then we'll keep uh, staying online as long as there are questions. All right. All yours, Brett. Yeah, no problem. So when it comes to our, our waste energy business, we offer secure destruction as part of uh, our service. And so we know with a lot of products, especially uh, confidential products, it's important that uh, the, the product be secure as it's being destroyed. And so um, we can direct hopper feed waste. Uh, we maintain uh, automated feed systems that tip the waste into the hopper, and all of this is digitally recorded to prove that the material was securely destroyed. So as part of our own facilities, this is a standard. When it comes to uh, shipping material that might go for recycling or composting or anything else not going to our waste energy facility, um, we can offer a load verification procedure where uh, Covanta can witness disposal on behalf of you, uh, we can manage uh, the, the seal reporting. So if you want to place a seal on a truck leaving your facility, we can take photo of that seal intact when it arrives to us or at, at one of our subcontractors, capture the seal number, et cetera, just to show you that we are verifying that the load has not been tampered with. Uh, and then as far as our, our security goes at these facilities, our, all of our facilities, our MPFs, our waste energy facilities, our DEA reverse distribution facility, highly secured and designed with security first and foremost. So all of our staff at these facilities are subject to a background check. The facilities are monitored uh, by a 24-hour camera system. They're all fenced in. The facilities are accessed by card access only. So uh, you can feel secure when you send material to Covanta knowing that 
uh, not only are we going to dispose of material using the method that you have approved, but that we're going to be able to do so in a uh, secure, controlled fashion. And so that's it for, for my slides. Uh, I just want to mention, I recognize there may be a need for a lot of individual follow-up with specific companies and specific wave streams. Um, so I have a link here. I've also shared it with Ron. Uh, this is a link to our uh, Covanta webpage for inbound leads. And uh, if you have any specific opportunities that you'd want to discuss, I'd encourage you to fill that form out. And then whatever the most local Covanta rep, whoever the most local Covanta rep to your facility is, will be assigned that lead and reach out to you to discuss it. Uh, we're committed to doing free consultations on any of the waste that you'd like to discuss, hear what your options are, see a proposal. We're happy to do that for anybody, but please use the form uh, so that it gets routed to the right person based on geography. Uh, and that's it for me. I want to thank everybody for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions that the, that the group has. There's Levy, who works with SKF, one of the major manufacturers of ball bearings, had a question I'm just um, going to get my camera about carbon capture technology. Uh, Levy, do you want to share some of your specific question here? I just unmuted you. Uh, and sure. Brett or uh, Jessica might be able to help you out here. Uh, yeah, it was more for Brett. Just curious okay. if you, he at the facilities utilize carbon capture or like what the emissions per ton difference is from the landfill. Yeah, they do. These are all clean uh carbon negative facilities, um, I'd encourage you to check out the website. Our Covanta website offers some details on exactly what the carbon capture detail uh, looks like and provides you some comparisons uh, for waste energy as, as uh, compared to landfill uh, for emissions. So you'll be able to see that through our website. Is that standard through the industry or uh, utilizing carbon capture? It's it's standard through our plants. I can't speak for our competition. Okay. I will say Covent, Covanta owns and operates about 80% of the waste to energy market in North America. And so if material is going to a waste to energy facility, odds are it's coming to one of ours. But there are other players like Wheel Liberator and then some regional uh, city-owned waste to energy facilities. Okay, great. Thank you for your clarification. Mm -hmm. I'm Aaron Kipatrick with Swinerton, a major engineering architectural firm had a question about the how Covanta provides information to its clients as it might relate to ESG reporting. Erin, do you want to add any more information to your question? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I think that we could potentially see a lot of different types of waste streams going to a lot of different areas. Do you provide like reports in terms of actual tonnages and like distances traveled and stuff like that for our own carbon accounting? Yeah, so any any of our customers, we do offer standard reporting, which includes dates of pickups, uh, all the all the rates, of course, to move from one facility to the other, treat type, and um, the tonnage. And so that's part of the standard awesome. reporting that our customers get on a monthly basis when you have recurring business with Covanta. And then if it was just a project type work where you know you need to clean out one warehouse of expired product and it's a one time job, we can also provide end of project reporting on things like that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. How does um, Covanta work with third-party vendors in scheduling loads? I don't know if you want to talk about that, if it's an easy answer, sure. if we can talk about that offline. I can I can cover that in 30 seconds. So, okay. um, so Covanta has a team that manages both the onboarding and the vetting of any third-party vendor that we do business with. That includes both a paper audit, a site visit, et cetera, usually a trial load before we onboard them as a full vendor. Um, in terms of scheduling into those vendors, Covanta would manage, if you were man if you were having Covanta manage your waste and we are subcontracting part of that to some third party, Covanta would manage all of the scheduling on your behalf, including all of the trucking, including managing appointments at those third parties. Um, that's part of our, our third party network management. Got it. And that's what I think why I wanted to have Kavana speak here is, again, it provides a one-stop shopping with so many organizations having different malt or different waste streams, even if you're a small company. There's organic, maybe you've got an employee cafeteria, you've got industrial waste, you might have plastic you're trying to recycle. You know, it can be complicated and Kavanta can provide that trusted, secure, compliant source for getting all of this addressed. 
Now, Daniel works with an art school in the Pacific Northwest, had a question about how do you go about recycling more detailed products like oil and solvents? Yeah, we, we produce a lot of um, paper contaminated products, um, contaminated with solvents and paints, and we d don't have a, a solution for, you know, dealing with those products as well as the solvents and the paint leftover paint themselves so yeah um, so those those products depending on the solvents and chemicals could be considered hazardous even if it's paper that's contaminated things like that could be considered right. hazardous yeah and so in those cases we would partner with a uh, a has waste disposal or a has waste incineration company to manage the disposal of that product. Sometimes recycling is not possible on something like a paper product if that paper is contaminated. Okay. 